Swiss. The national carrier of Switzerland, not Sweden for those who don't know the difference, enjoys a good reputation for many reasons, but probably not because they're a good airline anymore. I have flown their business class about a dozen times, but couldn't review most of my recent flights because they were all overnight. My experience every single time has been... how should I put this without spoiling the video? Interesting. I just need to put this out there. This video contains a lot of criticism. We're talking about a flight costing thousands of dollars for six hours on board. Things shouldn't be this poor across the board, so people who spent their hard-earned money on a flight leave feeling disappointed. Today, I'm flying Swiss A330 business class from Zurich to Dubai, two days from a year on the dot since I flew their first class on this very route, flight, and aircraft. That was a lovely experience and something I would gladly repeat. Swiss business, on the other hand, is a whole different matter. Let's get into what it's really like flying Swiss business class from someone who's flown over 150 airlines on my own dime. Welcome to London Heathrow. I'm going on a bit of a Star Alliance halfway around the world adventure after visiting my family in New York and decided to start by flying United Polaris from Newark to Heathrow, a flight that left me with an unexpectedly positive impression, which you can check out in the card now. Then continuing from Zurich to Dubai, but I need to get from London to Zurich. So a quick interruption on a British Airways A319 to get there and we arrive, collect our bags and end up a little confused. All right, it is morning here in Zurich. We are about to halt just on a five and a half hour flight down to Dubai. First, we have to find check-in, which is proving a little more complicated than expected, even though we've flown from Zurich many times before. I finally find check-in where the lines are surprisingly long, but no worries. 15 minutes later, we're on our way to the gate. I feel like 90% of my flights are delayed at Zurich airport, but one thing is great. There's a priority security line here for first business class and even Star Alliance Gold, which made a huge difference. Another thing that's pretty great, the Swiss Business Class Lounge. This is the one in the non-Schengen e-gates. The food is quite good, and when I say that, I'm comparing this to other European airlines, since context always matters. One of the best features is this comfortable rest area, but keep in mind that the lounge can get incredibly busy. At least you can always come out here to the terrace and enjoy the views, especially in the warmer months. <laughs> This is the absolute highlight of the lounge for me and an excellent way to pass time for any av geek. While I plane spot, I try to download some files on my computer. May the odds be ever in your favor with that one because the Wi-Fi speeds, yeah, could be better. Okay, so we finally got to shower and freshen up a bit. I didn't want to vlog too much before that because I didn't shower this morning when we were just flying in from London, so it wasn't a big deal. What I wasn't expecting was that they only have three shower rooms here in the main lounge at Swiss biggest international hub. That's just way too little to be honest, but at least we got a shower in. And the good news in one sense was that our flight is delayed. If it hadn't been, we might not have had time to shower. It was supposed to leave at 12.50, now delayed to 2 p.m. So really not too bad. It's currently one, so we're gonna head to the gate any minute and hop on board Swiss A330 business class down to Dubai. It's time to head to the gate where our new replacement A330 awaits. The Swiss Airbus A330-300 is the backbone of their long haul network on flights up to nine hours or so and operate many key routes. This A330 features three cabins with 183 economy class seats, eight first class seats up front and 45 business class seats spread across two cabins, one mini and one massive. The mini cabin is the best place to sit, but it's difficult to snag a seat here. Now I can't think of another airline with so many different seat types in one cabin, at least at the moment. As you can see, one side of the cabin alternates between having couple seats and throne seats. Meanwhile, the middle features more spacious couple seats. I'll show you all of this on board. Then the other side features solo seats, so basically the configuration is mostly 2 2 1. Oscar and I wanted to try the throne seats because you guys voted for it in a community poll. Swiss charges extra for them, by the way, but for some reason we kept getting an error when trying to purchase. 48 hours before departure, you're supposed to be able to select them for free, which can be a 
amazing since they often have several left at that time, but again, we kept getting an error when trying to select them. Swiss phone support couldn't help either. During check-in, we ended up in 12 kilo and 14 kilo. There is no row 13. It could definitely have been a lot worse, so let's take a look on board coming up next. It's difficult to record as we get on board since so many people have boarded with group one, a higher boarding group than mine. However, here you have a peek of the left side of the cabin and arguably the best, but more expensive throne seats. These couple seats are the absolute worst because if you compare them to the middle ones, they only have one seatback pocket instead of two and much less space by the feet. The seats in the center have quite generous space by the feet in contrast, and so do ours. Welcome to 14 kilo, the last seat in the cabin, and Oscar's right ahead of me in 12 kilo. These seats um, aren't ideal. You are literally seated in the aisle with no privacy or separation. My seat is better than Oscar's, but still has about the same amount of privacy as Harry and Meghan. Also, does this cabin look luxurious to you? Welcome to Nonstop Dan. If this is your first time here, by the way, you might have noticed I don't hold back. There's not really much to see as we look around our Greyhound bus seat. Sorry, I mean $2,000 business class seat. We have our charging and a reading light here, more storage, a USB port, and an ancient computer port. Your seat controls, that's pretty much it. The entertainment screen is touch, so there's no remote. We'll discuss the contents of the entertainment a little later. During boarding, the flight attendants come by with a choice of champagne or what they call grape juice but tastes like grape cider. I really enjoy it though and I like that it's unique. That's the extent of the pre-departure service and at 2.20pm, about an hour and a half behind schedule, we push back as an Emirates A380 has just pulled in next to us. There is a crazy line of wide bodies ahead of us, but at 2.35, we finally blast off toward the Gulf. Pretty much all the aircraft in line to take off before us were delayed for one reason or another. The most obvious thing impacting this, a global staff shortage. I'm not really a doom and gloom type of person, but clearly the economy isn't unanimously considered to be very strong right now. In fact, Warren Buffett has been selling stocks all year, possibly in preparation for a price drop. If you're like me, you might think, okay, what are the other easy online investment options besides stocks? Well, one millionaire favorite is art, an asset that usually performs strongly when the stock market is weak. It's actually outpaced the S&P 500 by 174% in the last 25 years. Of course, it's important to diversify your investment, so art may be something to consider, and the place to find affordable art to invest in is my longtime loyal sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks' team of art experts and financial analysts has delivered positive net returns to their investors on 16 straight sales. They've acquired over 300 paintings with almost a million dollars in assets under management. Luckily, my subscribers can still skip the waitlist and start collecting today. Just go to masterworks.art slash nonstopdan or click the link now at the top of the description. I immediately try connecting to the in-flight Wi-Fi and oh my goodness, I have forgotten that Swiss charges more for Wi-Fi than Ryanair would charge for this entire flight if they operated this route. Luckily, these prices have been updated between me taking this flight and posting this video, so you'll now pay the following. Still pretty steep, but not nearly as bad as before. No worries though, the meal service begins pretty quickly with a choice of beverages from the trolley and some nuts. The crew also hand out menus which look quite nice. The veggie option from the world's oldest vegetarian restaurant Hiltel sounds amazing and the crew tell me that this is what's been catered for us. I'm excited. The drink list is pretty tiny, hence my drink choice is Coke. The meal begins just as we turn and the sun hits the food. Ooh, that's a sexy shot. This looks delish and tastes delish too. Swiss catering is in a league that Lufthansa can only dream of, and they consistently deliver quite tasty food out of Zurich. 
I guess that's the one good thing I've mentioned on this flight so far. The main course is not the veggie udon from the menu, it's gnocchi, which first of all, this is supposed to be crew plated. Okay. It tastes really good and fresh, so that's great. I asked the crew about the udon and they seemed confused by my question. Apparently they have no udon left, which is fine, but the weird thing is they never acknowledged that what they told me was incorrect. Honestly, no big deal because I really enjoyed the food anyway. For dessert, the crew insists there is only dried fruit for me and Oscar, but I push back asking, have you checked in the galley? No, there is nothing. Could you please go check? Two minutes later, ta-da, like magic, this beautiful and delicious chocolate mousse shows up. You know it's bad when I know what Swiss cater is better than their own crew. The food is clearly the highlight so far, so let's get back to the roast. As you can tell, I'm not very impressed by the seat. The tray table makes it almost impossible to leave while it's in use, which becomes a big problem when the meal service is very drawn out and you're drinking a lot. Guess who was in that situation? At this point, I decide to work, which I enjoy until I realize, wait a minute, there have been no hot towels. If United can offer multiple hot towels on a six hour flight, I'm pretty sure Swiss can as well. Anyway, I'm getting peckish again and want to take you back to the menu. There's supposed to be a snack section set up in the galley that is nowhere to be seen at any point. The lavatory is of course in the galley, so every time I visit I have a look, but there is nothing. The lavatory looks like this and is well stocked with some nice products though. With that out of the way, let's check out the amenity kit and hope that more positive things are coming up next. I don't want to spread more negativity, so from now on, I'm only looking at positives. The Swiss Business Class Amenity Kit is in partnership with Victorinox, a Swiss brand, and contains the essentials. It really leaves you wanting more. Let's say that's a good thing. What about bed mode? Well, the seat lies flat, that's a plus. It also has the firmness of a wooden bench, even when adjusted to maximal softness, which is another plus if you like sleeping on wooden benches. At least I'm impressed Swiss didn't add those dividers that cities add to stop people from sleeping on benches in public. This applies to their 777 seat 2 where I woke up with neck cramps during an overnight flight from Singapore last year. The bedding is very eco-friendly, it saves weight by being virtually non-existent, so great for fuel burn. There's also a lovely pit by your hips from previous users, pre-shaped for your comfort. Even better, you can avoid decision anxiety since there are no individual air vents for you to have to deal with. What a relief. In all seriousness, I'm really piling on the criticism here, I know. I never take this for granted, and I'm incredibly grateful to be able to travel like this so often. While a mediocre experience is fine for me since it's one of many, I am reminded of why I do what I do. I want to make sure that you don't waste your hard-earned money or points on something subpar. If you're taking one or two trips a year, you should only have the best. So why sugarcoat something when it doesn't live up to expectations? Who does that benefit? No one besides the airlines. So far, Swiss is confirming that their business class just isn't worth your hard-earned money, at least with the current seats. Honestly, I don't have much work to do since I couldn't download footage on the lounge Wi-Fi, so I decide to watch some entertainment, which I barely ever do if I'm not eating. The selection is very similar to Lufthansa and has grown pretty impressively in the past few years. They have one of my favorite shows ever, Veep, but I opt to watch this awesome documentary. About an hour out of Dubai, the crew, specifically a really friendly and smiley younger woman, comes by with a snack tray. That's where the tray is. Now we're talking. Mango sorbet from Mervin Peak and some potato chips? Why not? As we approach Dubai, let me conclude. Swiss business sort of has the charm of a certain Floridian politician who shares names with a Weasley family member and the luxury of a Holiday Inn Express. It's an incredibly disappointing jump from their lovely first class and frankly doesn't represent Switzerland well in my opinion. If you want to know what European airline I recommend instead, click the card in the corner now. If you've watched this far and didn't go crazy from all my criticisms, maybe you'd enjoy my other honest, self-funded flight reviews. Why not consider hitting subscribe in that case? You might also like On Air, my weekly travel news and discussion podcast with my friend, aviation analyst Alex Macheras. You can check that out on the screen now.
For information on how I paid for today's flight, you can check the description as always. And until I see you in my next video, which I promise will be a very positive one, I've saved a positive review for next. Fly safe, guys.